In the future, we see an old abandoned funhouse as we see dead apostles on the floor, as we see blood all over the floor, as we see Sydney walks out covered in blood as she looks at them and says, I put in all the work and yet I don't win a prize. What a sick joke. As she walks through the fun house and walks away, as we focus on one of the dead apostles, as we see their hand starting to move, as we then see them turn into a reanimated corpse, as they get up and their head turns quickly as they run down the hall to go feast on Sydney. We see a foggy view of a group of deadheads as we see Sydney, Nathan, Vivian, and Rose standing in a field as Sydney says, Run! They run as Sydney holds Rose's hand as they run across the field as we see dozens of deadheads running and coming after them. Nathan then steps on a trap as he badly hurts his leg. Vivian tries to help him get out of it, but the dead are still coming for them. Sydney says, you help him, I'll cover you as long as I can. She looks at Rose and she says, stay behind me at all times. She protects Rose as she slowly pulls out her gun and she says, time for a little game of chess, motherfuckers. She shoots a few of them and says, check. Vivian is still trying to get Nathan's foot unstuck as we see his leg is bleeding very badly. Sydney shoots a few more and says, Oh, come on, you running freaks. Free flesh right here. Stay on me. Vivian gets Nathan unstuck as she puts her arm around him and she says, We gotta move. Sydney says, You guys get a head start. We're right behind you. As Nathan and Vivian run for a while, as they then come across an old RV. Sydney kills several more as she sees she's got two bullets left as she then kills one more and the first bullet doesn't kill this deadhead as she fires it again and it goes down and she says checkmate she looks at rose and she says are you okay rose nods and she says all right we got to keep moving kid We see them make it to the RV and lock themselves in. As we see, Sydney says, we need to get out of the area. I'm sure there's more nearby. Vivian gets in the driver's seat and says, still got a quarter of a tank. Sydney says, all right, I'm counting on it. Let's go. We see them driving as we see the sun coming up. As they're driving and Sydney checks on Nathan and says, hey, how's the leg? Nathan says, ah, it still hurts. Rose says, oh, that's a bad boo-boo. Sydney says, yeah, we got to find a place to rest up for a day or two. Let you heal. Nathan says, thanks, Sydney. Sorry for slowing you down. Sydney says, oh, no, you're fine. You have nothing to apologize for. And I got to admit, I don't know what we're doing out here. If anything, us resting for a few days will just give us more time to figure out what we need to do and where the hell we're going to go. Vivian says, uh, guys, you see this? They stop the RV and get out to see a sign that says, Ziltramite, your road to survival's destination. Vivian says, do you think it's real? Sydney says, well, it's hard to know people's true intentions just by writing on a sign. Rose asks, 
Is it safer than Kingstonville? Sydney says, there's no guarantee, kid, but we're going to try to find somewhere safe for now. We're going to try. We see an old house in the distance, and Sydney says, but for now, right there is where we hunker down for a bit. They drive up to the house. As they get out, we see a few straggler deadheads followed them. Sydney says, Vivian, help Nathan get inside. I got this. Vivian says, I can help you. Sydney says, I'm fine. Just get him inside. As we see, several deadheads are running towards the RV. As Sydney shoots a few, and then she notices a sign that says, Don't stay long. As we see, they all get inside the house and lock themselves in as we then hear something under the floor. Out of nowhere, they all fall through the floor and into a dark underground space. Sydney, Rose, Vivian, and Nathan all fall into the room underground as Sydney looks up and sees they've been locked in. Back at the nest, we see apostles eating in the cafeteria as we see James walks up on the catwalk above them. As they see James coming up and they all kneel for him. And James says, Pretty slow reaction, but we'll work on it. As you were. He walks into his apartment and he sees Billy as he looks at him and says, Adjusting decently, I hope, son. Billy says, It's nice. Lots of good DVDs in here, too. James says, well, how about we get you out of here? I'll show you exactly what I do. It ain't just DVD stuff and relaxing around here. Hell, being the head dog fucker means a lot of responsibility. Billy says, well, I don't know how to be a leader like you. James says, oh, it's very simple. Let me show you how I do what I do. Billy looks nervous and says, okay, um, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Back with Sydney. Sydney tries pushing the latch open over and over again. Nathan says, We gotta open that sucker. We then see a bunch of hallways leading to different directions. And Nathan says, We gotta find a way out of here. Vivian says, Okay, look, I'm sure there's another one. Rose says, Which way do we go? Sydney says, Okay, just stay close, okay? They start walking down the hall as they take a left. Sydney says, let's turn here. They take a left and a right. And the hall keeps going. And Vivian says, how big is this place? Sydney says, maybe we should just go back. Vivian says, okay. Was it left or right? Nathan says, I don't, I don't remember. Rose says, are we lost? Sydney says, no, sweetheart, we're not lost. We're just going to find a way out. They then turn the corner. We see the shadow of a man down the hall. Sydney says, go back, go back. They run down the hall as a few deadheads bust down a door and get between them as Nathan gets separated from them. Sydney and Vivian start killing the deadheads in front of them. As we then see some of these deadheads don't have arms and are covered in blood. Sydney picks up on this and Vivian says, no, where the hell did Nathan go? Sydney says, we double back, we find him, come on. More deadheads run towards them as Sydney takes Rose and runs. All three of them run away as they fall down a hole onto another level. As we see blood and bones all over the floor. As we hear a voice of a man saying, is there a new guest? I love guests. Sydney whispers, Damn this hole, come on, come on. We hear the voice saying, Why are you running? I just want to play a few games with my new guests. Sydney, Vivian, and Rose run as fast as they can. We see Nathan on his own slowly walking through these halls as he then finds two people in cells as we see most of their skin has been ripped off. 
and one of them says, You need to run. Run now. Nathan sees one is missing a hand, and the other one is missing a few toes and fingers. Nathan looks horrified, as we hear a voice from far saying, Is my dinner talking back again? Confirming it's a cannibal. As one of them says, You have one chance. Run now. Trust me. You don't want to be part of this. You don't want to end up like this. Nathan has sympathy for them, but he looks at his injured leg as the man sounds like he's getting closer, and he says, I'm so sorry, as he tries running as fast as he can. We see him running for a while as he stops to take a breath and gives his leg a rest as we see the shadow of a man standing behind him as Nathan sees this and says, Vivian, I hope you got out. The man says, Running is fun, however, I'm starved. Don't worry, I'll make it fast. As he knocks him out. We see Sydney, Vivian, and Rose stop as they see a latch that could lead to a potential exit. As Vivian says, That could be our way out right there. Sydney hears screams from far and she says, We can't leave. We gotta find Nathan. Whether he's alive or dead, we gotta get him. Vivian says, I, I just don't know if I can... If I can... <sighs> Sydney says, What's wrong with you? We then see a bite on Vivian's neck as she says, I don't have much time left. You two go. Find a way out. I'll find Nathan and I'll get him out of here. Sydney says, You don't even know how much time you have left. And you may not find him. Vivian says, I'm sure gonna try, if it's one thing I can do, Sydney says. Haley said it herself, you're our people. And in honor of her, and in honor of what she did for us, I ain't going anywhere. We stick together till the end. So let's go get Nathan. Nathan wakes up, tied to a chopping table. As we see, he can't get out. As we see a saw at the end of the table, as we see this man walks over with his tools and says, I want you to know something about this. It ain't personal. You could have walked up and said hello. You see, I've spent years trying to find food, and every time it was rotten, picked over to nothing. And I had two options, die or eat. But, honestly, the thing I truly struggled with over the years is being alone. And oh, now that I've found people, I really don't like killing them because now I know what it's like to talk to people again. So I'll just take a few limbs off just so I can get by for the next week. And I hope that once I'm through with you and the other test subjects that I have, Hopefully some new faces will show up and I'll get to be friends with them too. And I will never be alone again. Never. Nathan says, no, 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 please, please don't. The man says, just stay still. As we see from Nathan's perspective, he turns the saw on and the saw starts moving towards Nathan. As we see, it goes between Nathan's legs and starts cutting off his dick. As Nathan screams out in pain, he then goes up to him and says, <laughs> He then starts cutting some of his fingers off as he takes several of them off as he says, Now that should be enough for the time being. Now that wasn't so bad now, huh? Nathan is coughing up blood as he's crying and in pain. But then, A door gets knocked down by Sydney as she walks in and aims her gun towards him and pulls the trigger, but her gun is empty. The man says, wow, more new friends. Oh, I knew you'd come around soon enough. Sydney says, I ain't your fucking friend, motherfucker. Rose, stay back. Vivian then falls to the floor as we see the bite has finally killed her. Nathan screams, Vivian, no, 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 
The man says, oh, it's okay. I mean, I've worked with deadheads before. They're much too aggressive for me, but I'm sure I could figure it out. Vivian instantly turns and gets up fast, and the man throws a knife towards Sydney, and she ducks. Vivian then grabs this man and bites him on the neck. Sydney then takes her knife and stabs Vivian in the head, and then takes a meat grinder and kills the man with it as he goes down and bleeds out. As Sydney says, I'm sorry, Vivian. I'm so fucking sorry. Nathan is crying and says, Sydney, please, please just fucking kill me. Please. Sydney says, No, no, I'm not putting you down. She sees all the pain that he's in and says, Nathan, I. Nathan says, <laughs> Oh, please, Sydney. I'll just slow you and Rose down and look at her. Rose looks scared and he says, She needs to survive. You know she does. But please, this is what I want. Sydney realizes that he's right and says, Rose, don't watch this. She turns around as Sydney then stabs Nathan in the head and ends his life. As we then see her looking through this room, as she sees a book that's been dropped on the ground, as we see a bunch of writing in a few different languages, as we see, it says, Delivery to Ranch. Sydney says, What the hell? She puts it away and says, We gotta go. We see she takes Rose as they start leaving. We see the man is turning into a deadhead as Rose says to Sydney. Sydney, shouldn't we? Sydney says, let him turn. We see they walk through the halls as they see the two people still locked up as Sydney takes the keys and lets them out. But we see neither one of them even moves out of the cell. Rose says, here's your chance to leave. Come on, here's your chance to leave. We all gotta go, come on. Sydney says, they're lost, Rose, they're lost. Come on, we gotta go. They go up the latch that they saw before. As it then opens, as we see Sydney and Rose make it out of there and leave the place behind. Back at the nest, we see James and Billy walking along the water. As we see Billy says, So am I ever going to get to become an apostle? James says, oh, You'll be more than that. Eventually, you'll probably lead this place all by yourself. Billy says, I am? James says, Well, of course. You see, my son's kind of a fucking pussy, but I see real potential in you. So I will teach you everything of what I do every step of the way. We see James walks past one of his guys, as the Apostle says, So you scared off another one of our best, huh? James says, Uh, I beg your fucking pardon? The Apostle says, You heard me. Audrin was one of our strongest. Bishop believed in him. He took him in, the real Bishop. And now we've lost him, Tegan, Cheryl, and now Audrin? Seems like ever since you took over, we're getting picked off like fucking flies. If you think I'm waiting for that to happen, to me, or my family, you're mistaken. I'm leaving with my family, and I'm leaving tonight. He starts walking away, and James says, Hey, now I don't recall letting you fuck off and lick my balls unless I ask you to fuck off and lick my balls. So, can you fuck off and lick my balls? Can you fucking do that? Okay. Now that that's settled, you ain't going. And I need all hands on deck. Can't have you bailing. The man says, I ain't staying here. You turn this place into a prison camp for kids, James says. I'm giving them a better life, and excuse me when I say, I beg your fucking pardon questioning the bishop. He snaps his fingers, and the other two apostles grab a hold of this guy, and James rubs his beard and says, Now what are we going to do with you? You know, I've been thinking about all this banishment shit that's been going on around here lately, and you're right, that's not good. Not good for us? Hell, it puts us all at risk. However, 
The way we operate around here without a fucking pussy leading us. And once you show me that you're not loyal, and we don't banish people anymore, well, I guess there's only one solution left. He goes up to Billy and says, Being Bishop means doing the hard things. Now what do you do when you have a problem, kid? Billy says, Um, I usually just tell my mommy and she helps me. James says, Wait, really? You run to mommy? You know, with how cold your father was, I at least assumed that he taught you how to handle things. Well, 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 Billy, my boy. I'm about to show you the most important part of leadership. Now, you see, there used to be something called laws. All right, th that's what they were called back in the day. Your home even tried to bring them back. But the reality is that if someone has it out for you, or if you think someone has it out for you, and you feel, I don't know, uneasy, there is absolutely no punishment for this. So watch this. Watch and learn. This is what you do to people that you don't like. This is what you do to people that piss you off. He slits the guy's throat as he bleeds out and falls face first in the sand as some blood sprays onto Billy's face. And James says, Here, you two, clean up the mess. One of them says, Yes, sir. James says, good man. He walks up to Billy and says, Now I know this may seem like a lot to you, but eventually, one day, I may not be around, and this could be you, and I'll be very proud of you when that day comes. Now come this way. As we see, Billy doesn't even look scared by this at all. Back with Sydney and Rose. We see them running through the woods together as Rose looks tired and says, Sydney, can we stop, please? Sydney says, I swear I heard some of those things not too far. We got to find a place to stay for the night. Hey, you okay? You're not bit, are you? Rose says, no, no, I just, I can't stop thinking about my mommy. Sydney says, look, kid, I know it's tough. Especially at your age. No one should have to see both of their parents die. Rose says, I actually didn't see my dad die. And that's what I keep thinking about. Sydney looks a bit nervous and says, Did you see what happened to him? Rose says, I didn't. But I saw my mom dead while I was trying to get away. Sydney says, Look, I do know what it feels like. I don't really talk about this much, but... Both of my parents died too, by a very bad woman who just wanted to destroy my life. It doesn't get easier, kid, and I'm not going to act like it does. You know, you actually remind me a lot of my sister. She honestly looked just like you. Rose says, what was her name? Sydney says, her name? Her name was Emma. Wow, I don't think I've spoken about Emma for a good few years. Rose says, my dad always said that it was always easier to talk about it than hold it in and let it consume you. Sydney says, yeah, yeah it is. Their conversation then gets interrupted by neon masks being lit up from far. Sydney sees this and says, run. They run through the woods as they run for a while. They then run into an old carnival. As they run through, as we hear the sound of an apostle saying, Well, looks like it's carnival playtime, boys! Sydney whispers, Since when do they start talking? She runs with Rose into a funhouse for cover, as we see dead bodies of children inside. As Sydney and Rose run through, as we see this apostle looks out and says, Not one for games, huh? That's okay. I always win a prize. He shoots the target to one of the games and says, See? I win again. Now running is going to make this a lot more fun for me. He doesn't hear a response and says, Okay. Funhouse it is, gentlemen. They slowly walk into the funhouse as we see them spreading out across this funhouse. As we see Rose hiding in a ball pit. As we see Sydney down the hall standing behind a wall as she quietly 
sneaks up behind an apostle and kills him. Rose is hiding in the ball pit as we see apostles just passing her by as she has a knife in her hand ready if she needs to. Sydney stealth kills two more apostles and then she pulls out her shotgun and she sees eight bullets left and whispers, let's make them count. We see she walks out to some apostles and says, hey, they turn around and she says, eat this talking freaks. She lights them up, killing several of them. The main apostle then fires back at her as we see he and his last few apostles run down the hall trying to kill her. As they fire back and forth at each other, Sydney nails a few more and she then bumps into an old clown corpse. As we see, it scares her a bit. But then, someone pistol whips her to the ground. The apostle then takes their mask off and says, Now I've seen you before. Your name is Sydney. What a load of fire you brought to the table here, Sydney. But James says you all die when we find you, so the lead guy says, now you gotta die. Those are the rules. Sydney says, rules? You psychos have rules? The guy says, oh, well, excuse me, Mrs. I can't accept rules. This is what happens now. Sydney says, then go ahead. Fucking do it. The guy says, no, Sydney, we can't yet. At least throw a fit. Maybe cry a little. I like to see the terror in your eyes. The guys both smile as we then see the knife goes through his neck as we see it was Rose. The other guy tackles Sydney as they fall into a ball pit. As we then see them fighting back and forth as Rose tries to help Sydney and Sydney says, stay back. The apostle starts punching her over and over again. And the guy says, I said it before. I said it before. Now you will die. Those are the rules. Out of nowhere, we see the apostle get shot in the throat mid-sentence as Sydney looks out of breath and says, ah, Thanks, kid. Where'd you get the gun from? We see Rose doesn't have a gun. As we see, Ryan walks in and says, You too, okay? Sydney looks confused and says, What the? Bishop? Ryan says, I'm glad we found you two. Sydney says, We? Ryan then sees the last few apostles getting into a truck and speeding off as Ryan helps Sydney up and says, I'll be back in a second, darling. He runs out trying to stop them as Sydney looks at Rose and says, Are you okay? Rose says, Yeah. Sydney says, What the hell is going on? We see the truck goes onto the main road as Bishop runs and jumps onto the back and climbs up to the top. The apostles in the back then hear Ryan up on the roof as he then gets on top and one of them climbs up the top as the truck is still moving. We see the apostle says, you're still not dead? Ryan says, no, not yet exactly. He slices him in two and ducks as blood goes everywhere. He then goes inside of the back of the truck and lights them all up as the rest all get killed. As we see him run up to the driver and he stabs him too as blood goes all over the windshield. As we see the truck is going off the road, as Ryan takes the wheel and kicks the apostle out of the truck and stops the truck in one piece. Ryan looks out of breath. And then he says, holy fuck, they bleed. We see an old abandoned funhouse as we see dead apostles on the floor, as we see blood all over the floor. As we see Sydney walks out, covered in blood, as she looks at them and says, I put in all the work, and yet I don't win a prize. What a sick joke. As she walks through the funhouse and walks away, as we focus on one of the dead apostles, as we see their hand starting to move, as we then see them turn into a reanimated corpse as they get up and their head turns quickly 
as they run down the hall to go feast on Sydney. Sydney sees the deadheads running after her as she sees Rose and says, Come on, they run out and close the door together as they back up against the wall. And Sydney says, Are you okay? Rose says, Yes, thank you for saving me. Sydney says, No problem. We see Ryan is covered in blood and he walks back and says, Well, where the hell is my thank you? Sydney says, eh, How about fuck you? Will that suffice? Ryan says, well, I'll take that. Listen, you're gonna have to get over that. We have a lot of bigger things at play here. Sydney says, What? Ryan says, Haley's alive. Miles, Luke, Ashley, uh, sniper guy with his side piece, I forgot his name, but yeah, they're all there too. Rose says, My dad? Ryan says, Who's your dad? Sydney says, Is Dave Miller with you guys? Ryan says, No, although with everyone that we're fighting, I'm sure he'll be joining us soon. But I gotta get both of you back. We have a lot of work to do. Sydney looks nervous because she doesn't know if she can trust him. But she says, I have your word that this is legit? This isn't a trick? Ryan says, Oh, I wouldn't play these type of tricks. Especially with kids that live in danger. Sydney punches Ryan once and says, That right there was for my leader, motherfucker. Alright, let's go. Ugh, good hit. I reckon I deserve that. Back at the nest, we see Isaac is awake as he's looking at himself in the mirror and puts an eye patch on his eye. As we hear a door opens and he says, Dad? He walks out to see Billy and Isaac says, Billy, what are you doing here? Billy says, James took me and everyone my age from my home. Isaac says, Hey, uh, are you okay? Did they hurt you at all? Billy says, No, no, I'm fine. Isaac looks nervous and says, You don't want to be here, kid. There's a war going on right now. What the hell was my father thinking bringing you here? Look, we're getting to the bitter end of this thing, okay? This war is just about finished. I can't have you getting hurt. No one your age should be seeing what you're seeing. Trust me, I speak from experience. Billy looks nervous because he doesn't know what to do. Back with Sydney and Ryan, Sydney says, So do you ever grow hair? Ryan sarcastically turns around and says, Nah, I just like it this way. Can you just be quiet on our way here? Sydney says, Sure, sure. Rose says, Sir, your head is shaped funny. Ryan rolls his eyes, and then we see Apostle Masks light up in front of them as Sydney and Rose pull out their weapons as Ryan says, It's all right. Keep your heart rates down. It's just me. We see one of them takes their mask off. As we see, it's Haley. She says, Sydney? Sydney and Haley hug, as Haley says. I thought you were dead, Sydney says. I almost was. Haley has a smile and says, How'd you get out? Sydney says, It was me, Rose, Nathan, and Vivian. They died getting here. Haley says, I'm so sorry. Sydney says, It's all right. Just please tell me what the hell's going on. Haley says, James snapped. He took Billy and every other kid in Kingstonville. Ryan offered to help me and Amelia too. Amelia wanted Ryan alive. And ever since then, Ryan has been helping me get my son back. And all those other kids too. Ryan says, which has been a pleasure of mine. Sydney says, what's up with the masks? Ryan says, my idea. If we blend in with them, they'll never know it's us. We can sneak in, no problem. Ashley says, well, let's hope this works. Ryan says, oh, it'll work. We see them inside of the lighthouse getting ready. As we see Tegan says, you think we'll be able to kill that snake tonight? Ryan says, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that happens. He's probably already sitting on a throne, drinking his sorrows away. Hell, he's probably sitting there saying, oh, I'm the big fucking bishop. Listen to me with my big tough guy voice. With all these fucking kids going around. Oh, I can't get any normal soldiers, so I'll get some fucking kids on my side to fight for me and defend me. What a fucking joke. Yeah, I'll kill him tonight. Tegan laughs and says, well, all right, I'm gonna get everything else loaded. Ryan says, sounds good. Amelia says, hey, are you scared? Ryan says, not at all. 
because I know what I'm doing this for, and I know it's the right thing, and I damn well, I'm definitely going to correct it. Amelia says, and that's why I'm believing in you. Ashley then says to Luke, going in one person, coming out a different one. That's what I feel like these last couple days have all been about. Luke says, nah, we've always been the same. We just decide to change our paths, that's all. Haley says to Sydney, I'm glad you're back, really. Are you sure this is something you're up for? Sydney says, you know the last conversation I had with Lincoln? He told me something that I thought about over the last couple days. He said that he felt like he shouldn't have ever even been here at all. He told me that part of him believed that he deserved to die out there on the road in the early months of the outbreak. I'm going to make sure that no one ever feels like they deserve something that horrible because they don't. Your son is in there, and we're going to make sure that he comes out of this no matter what. Haley says, yeah. Yeah, we will. Ashley says, all right, guys, let's go. We see they all get in the trucks as they all start driving out. Back at the nest. We see Billy eating in the cafeteria as we see two of the other kids walk up to him, and Billy says, Hey, Natalie. Natalie and her friend Sylvie sit down with him, and Natalie says, Hey, are you okay? Especially living with that big fuckboy up there? Billy says, I'll be fine. Just need to hang tight. I know my mom's out there right now, and I know she's figuring something out. She's doing her part out there. But for now, we need to do our part in here. Sylvie says, but how? I mean, we're just kids. They're grown-ups. Billy says, yep, very stupid grown-ups too. Our part in here is fighting from the inside, just like my father would do. And I'm watching every little move that James is making. I may not be able to take him down all by myself because of my age, but I'm still gonna get every piece of information and every little detail that he shares with me. I'm gonna use against him and his idiot son. We see James sitting in Bishop's old bar drinking a beer as he's writing down checkpoints where he's placing apostles around the general area to guard the nest. As he writes that down and takes a sip of his drink, We see Haley and Ryan and the others pulling into a big parking garage a few miles out as they all get out, and they're all dressed like apostles, and Haley says, we move in 10. She goes up to the roof, and Ryan goes up with her. We see Haley on the roof looking nervous as Ryan walks up behind her and says, you ready? Haley says, I don't think I'll ever be. Ryan says, Tuh, me neither. Look, I, um, I had my chances as a leader, and I, I fucked it up. You still have people that care all about you, and they're all around you right now, backing you up and defending you. So I ain't gonna be the one leading this charge. It's you, Mrs. West. It's all you. So let me ask you something. You think you can get us all out of this? Haley says, I hope I can. Ryan says, no, 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 no. I'm gonna rephrase that. Can you get us out of this? Haley says, yes I can. Ryan says, there you go. And Ryan starts walking away and says, oh yeah, when we were going through the inventory back at Kingstonville, we found an old weapon that you may find pretty useful for tonight. He walks away and Haley stands there and says, I'm coming baby boy. I'm coming. <laughs>